wish that I could say that I was a visionary way back when, some 20 plus years ago in the city of North Adams when uh, the idea of arts and saving an economy was first proposed to me and uh, my first reaction was when Thomas Krenz brought it in was to laugh at him and say, yeah, right, I've got an unemployment rate of 16 percent, I've just lost 2,000 jobs in the, uh, in the factories and surrounding communities in the county and, uh, and I'm going to tell the community I'm going to save uh, our economy and rebuild our city through the arts and especially a museum of con contemporary art. And, uh, and, and I said, I can't even spell contemporary, never mind understand what it means. And, uh, and I said, so, you know, I'm not so sure about this. Well, um, he did sell me on it. And what sold me on it, I think, more than anything else, it was the only game in town. Uh, we had a lot of large, empty manufacturing businesses. I hope you can make that work, Chris. <laughs> I'm in trouble. But, um, but anyways, um, uh, talked about uh, how, how we can use the arts and, and what it was all about. And you have to understand that North Adams, Massachusetts was just really the worst place you can even imagine. And, uh, and it was described as the Appalachia of the Northeast. Uh, the author James Mishner described North Adams as a classic case of urban blight in the Northeast. Uh, we really had no hope, and as some other speakers had mentioned uh, uh, this morning, is that low self-esteem, not only you know, by others of, of the city, but the people themselves. They lost their sense of pride. They saw no future. Um, in fact, 50% of those that became unemployed did not have a high school education. Uh, we didn't even get touch tone phone service until uh, late 1990. And so, you know, we were a little backward out there in this northwest corner of Massachusetts. And the idea of arts, you know, I didn't understand arts. I don't pretend to even understand it today, but I do understand the impact it can have on a community in several ways. And first and foremost, it was an economic development project for me. And that's how I tried to sell it to my community, tried to sell it to the governor at that time, it was Dukakis, tried to sell it to the legislature, and of course to, to my own community, that uh, we were going to turn that around. But it's the biggest thing that it did too, was it changed the image of that dirty old mill town, as we had been described. It changed us in so many other ways. Um, and it made us f feel once again proud of ourselves because now, all of a sudden, in neighboring Williamstown, which was where, which was far more wealthier, it was okay to come into North Adams. It was okay to bridge the two communities together, and it was more, most importantly, Berkshire County, which is where I am located, had all these cultural attractions around us, and nobody was coming. It was so bad in 1992 that we had a Sheridan Inn that was only 18 years old, 102 rooms on our main street, and it sold at auction for $225,000. Um, I mean, it was bad. Um, in 1996, as late as 1996, Yankee Magazine, which is, you know, motherhood and apple pie, and they don't say a bad word about anybody or anything, described North Adams as a sorry gateway to anywhere. Uh, <laughs> Then there was the developer in the neighboring community who said the best thing that could happen to North Adams is that it would be flooded to make lakefront property available for us who live over in Williamstown. So, it, um, so how, do you, how do you do it? So lo and behold, this professor from Williams College showed up and said, this is about contemporary art. But he explained it in a different way. And it wasn't just about museums because back in those days, whether you were in politics or just an average citizen or you weren't in the arts, arts was just for certain people. And it wasn't integrated into a community. It wasn't lo looked upon as a driver. And it has now, some 20 years later, become this museum, Mass Mocha in North Adams, become the catalyst. But a lot of things hap had to happen along the way. We had to sell it to the, uh, to the legislature and convince them that arts was about economic development, arts was about jobs, arts was about education. I had one of the worst school systems in the state of Massachusetts, a state that prides itself in education and how we can incorporate it. And because one of the first things I said before we proceed in this, we're going to make sure that it's integrated in this community. Mass Mocha is part of the community and not in North Adams. 
is going to be part of our educational system and there's going to be programs there. Then we will take this journey, then I will take the shots and thank God the dogs weren't around then or I would have been blasted all over them from here to kingdom come. Now you also have to understand too when we started out on this journey that we were panned by the Boston Globe, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Newsweek, you name it. None of them said, why would you locate a museum in North Adams, Massachusetts, three and a half hours from New York City, two and a half hours from Boston, out in the boondocks, and very simply, we had something within our community they had no, no place else. We had 28 buildings all connected together with an empty factory. We had a way to develop it and grow it. And that's what I tell most communities. Don't look outside, look at what you have. We have a building in North Adams that's now filled with 38 artists' lofts, workspace included uh, in, in, their, in, this, in this area. It was tried as a market it for 20 years empty as an incubator building for small businesses. With the arts brought this, 38 really new businesses to the community. And it, how did it impact the, the guy at the, at the hardware store? It impacted it impacted it so much now that Lowe's is talking about coming there and it's a big deal for us to have a Lowe's coming there. But it impacted the gas stations and if you asked them how did it, uh, did it matter, it didn't matter to them about this museum, it wasn't going to mean anything. So a movie came along, a documentary Downside Up and, and, and some of you have seen it but it's still an inspiring piece. It gives hope to a lot of communities and you, it sees what can happen. And it was done by Nancy Kelly, who was a native of the city, who came back and saw the changes. And she did it through the eyes of her aunt and uncle and her mother and father, and how they went through the decline of the industrial base in the city and saw what happened. But they also saw, too, in building this, that, and I learned it along the way, too. And Buddy Cianci, who was the mayor in Providence, just got out of jail. Um, and. <laughs> But he was a visionary, he just had a problem. <laughs> but he was a visionary in the sense that he saw, he saw what the arts could do. He said, bring the artist downtown in Providence. And he says, soon the, the restaurants would follow and soon the businesses' uh, uh, offices would follow and housing would follow and everything. And he capitalized on it and a waterfront that was there and it worked. He was truly the first one that, 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 in my mind, that recognized this. And there was a former mayor, Kevin White, in Boston who did it when he saw the importance of restoring uh, Faneuil Hall in, in that area too. Taking what's within your community and building upon it. And, and you know what, making sure the community is involved in this. Are we all set to, or close to it? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, I, I'll just keep talking. Uh, but, but anyways, when, when we went about this, uh, to, I think that there's a few things they have to realize, too, is that the arts community is slowly integrating into the mainstream. Legislators are slowly understanding the importance of working and integrating arts into a community. And when you bring arts into a community, and, and it was mentioned here about artists being crazy, they're more than crazy, I got news for you. But, uh, uh, but they, they, are, they are an important component, but they have the ideas. They have no money, but they have the ideas to, uh, to do a lot of things. And once they understand that if you work within the system, that things can happen. Government also has to realize too, and they have more egos on the government side, that when they're working with, with the artists themselves, bringing them together, a lot of good things can happen, and most importantly, energy. And I talk about what the change of the image of the community has been. Now we're described by Yankee Magazine as one of the most fi five desirable places to visit in New England. That whole change of thinking, the image game. And I often thought back to Ronald Reagan and when in his presidency, and I went to his philosophy, make everybody feel good even when it isn't. And we started to do that in North Adams with the influx of the artists coming here. We started to, to put together strong planning measures. And you'd say, why, why would you do that? Because we wanted to make sure that when people came to the community and you do something special in their commu your community, they're going to see something positive happening. And if they see something positive happen, then they're going to be interested and they're going to come. 
what happened in North Adams after Mass Mocha was that you saw eight new restaurants open, all small ones. Now, some of them closed and reopened, but you know, today I can stand here and say, 10 years later, those restaurants are still open, maybe with different owners, but they're still open. Housing has come into the downtown because of Mass Mocha and the catalyst that it has been. You've seen the artist lofts, but also you're now seeing people moving into the downtown. And why are they moving into the downtown? It isn't because of the store, it's because of the cultural attractions that you must have in your downtown, whether it's a, a, a theater, whether it's the restaurants, whether it's uh, other, uh, the galleries that are there, that makes it a desirable place. The best neighborhoods in the world are located in New York City. I believe, I've, I've said that many times, and I've said that to, to every audience I've spoken to, they know one another, they're close. Uh, out in the rural areas, we don't know each other. But as downtowns come together, you're going to see new neighborhoods develop there, where you s see strip malls that are now empty. Those are going to be converted into housing and be made attractions and retail will follow with it if you have a strong cultural base with it all. Now, I'm a believer in it and for a lot of reasons because I've seen the changes in my city. I'm not smarter. You, most of you are smarter than I am. And, um, and I'm not the visionary that I pretend to be. I, but what I did say, see was an idea and take it and hired the people, however, to carry out a vision for my city. How are we doing? Let, let me just tell you a little about, uh, about this. This is a condensed version of, of the uh, movie Downside Up and, uh, and how she came back to the city and a city she never wanted to even claim as her own. And she was an artist in her own right and, and she saw what was happening in the transformation that was, was taking place in the city. And, um, you know, it wasn't by any master plan and I stress that to you. I don't believe in master plans. I think that there are $200,000 of wasted money, and the, it usually sits on a shelf someplace. Um, what I do believe, however, is in vision for a vision for a community. And when you, when the arts came along, it gave the community an, a chance to change its image in other ways. That means putting in strong sign ordinances. That means making sure that properties were cleaned up, especially in old downtowns. Now, I drove through South Boston. And I can tell you what a pretty little downtown it is. Yes, there's empty stores, but you know what? 70% of mine were empty when we started on this journey. Today, only 10% of them are empty. And we keep uh, filling them and growing them all the time. But we had to do a lot of things uh, along the way. We had to have a, put a planning board in place, and they were all told to think two words, think pretty. That's all they had to do. If it was pretty, we okayed it. Uh, yeah, unless, <laughs> unless it was a foxy lady or something like that, but uh, uh, but uh, but but that was the thinking: make it look pretty, create a very positive image of the community too. So you had to bring them all together in this process. It wasn't just saying, "Well, you're going to drop the arts in the community and everything's going to work." It doesn't work that way. You have to do the other things, and you have to make sure that there were positive results with the museum coming and other things happening. And it had, those positive results had to be felt by the people who lived in that community. From the day Mass Mocha was announced until it opened its door, not one negative newspaper, or one letter, negative letter was in the newspaper about this project from any citizen of, of the community. And that's amazing in itself because we got everybody on board. We talked about saving the heritage of the community, the mills and everything else, and finding a reuse for them. They became stakeholders in it. The kids became benefactors of it. And, you know, it's made a big difference. Uh, uh, and I've mentioned this a couple of times when I've been in Virginia. When you stop and think that we went from one of the worst school systems to one of the better ones, but most importantly, we have the arts in the school now. What you're doing here is amazing. We're doing the same thing in North Adams, bringing the kids in, exposing. As a former school teacher, I guess we were more lucky than some areas from what I heard. Uh, you know, we used to get art once every two weeks and they teach uh, my kids how to make paper mache, finger painting and whatever, melt wax, uh, uh, nothing uh, relevant, but just to give free time for the teacher to go out and have some prep time. It's different now. It's different, it's different. The kids go to Mass Mocha, they have their own space there, they have kids space, they show it and we use them as our goodwill ambassadors by getting them involved in it because then they brought their parents, then they brought their grandparents, then they brought their aunts and uncles, 
and they started doing those things, and that makes it important. So it can be a tremendous ripple effect within the community. Are we set to go? You just tell me what to hit. I would only last a 
The idea came from Tom Kranz, who is the director of the Williams College Museum of Art, which is only five miles away from North Island. Culture is a business, it is an industry, and it does, it, it does generate value. And if you understand the mechanics of that value, then uh, you can make a strong political argument. Well, I was ready to change, but I said a contemporary museum of art, I said, this guy's going to be crazy. We, we had then some, some private conversations about economic impact and what this could mean to the region. And then developed a fairly sophisticated economic impact model. I wanted something that has some substance to it and could lead someplace, and so I wasn't really sure about it. And I was, certainly didn't understand contemporary art. And do you now? Well, I have a better understanding of it, and of course my, my crack at the time throughout this was I wouldn't go across the street to see it. <laughs> I don't think I still would. <laughs> Tom Kearns, who has an idea for Mass Walker, is from Williams College in Williamstown. A place he calls itself the village beautiful. <coughs> it's only five miles away from North Adams, but it's a million miles away in so many ways. Orchestra. That's 45 minutes from here. Um, over 2 million visitors 
come to Berkshire's every year, and probably you know less than a thousand came to our files, um, which is a really company town. This is the first day, obviously, in Mass Milk Open, and we opened it up to the community itself, and they were all local the people. They walked in, they looked around, and they didn't understand anything that was there. They just had plungers stuck out of the wall. <laughs> oh my God, so this, one guy said, ah, there's a motorcycle, they recognized it. But you know what they recognized? The true art to them was in the restoration of the buildings, and the saving of the buildings. So, you know, like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder, and that's what they saw when they went. But most importantly, they felt a sense of pride in their community. I've been in Dallas for 25 years, and theoretically, I should have one foot in the art world and one foot in North Adams. But really, this art scares me. <laughs> I mean, it's 
this is 15,000 square feet of space. And when I came up there 10 years ago, they were talking about tearing down these mills. And there was a reminder of a past that was never going to come back. I love it up here. And the mechanics of living is just so much easier here. I mean, it's two minutes to get downtown, I park right in front, I walk in, I get my help, I don't have to go to the line, and I leave. From that standpoint, living is fantastic. Uh, we miss some ethnic foods, um, you know, you know, more choices of theater and, and movies and things like that. But that's coming. I know it's coming. I'm not so sure. I mean, look at this. One day after my smoker opens, downtown North Athens is a dust bowl. But on the museum's opening day, I asked Joe why he thought my smoker would make a difference. I'm guessing that you, if you look close, you can already find three or four hundred uh, jobs that are here now because of this project that uh, we've been open now for uh, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> is like a cultural theme park. And Mass Smoker is a roller coaster, the big attraction. But my dream is that there'll be 20, 30 galleries all over North Adams. And not the traditional galleries, but new kinds of alternative spaces. Explain this to you because this is something I told him as an artist. I said, You're crazy, it'll never work. That was 10 years ago, and we're still doing it. But we thought he thought it'd be great to close off one of our side streets, bring all this sand downtown, and have a beach party for the kids and teach them art that way through sand castles, so on and so forth. So he, he sold me on it again. I thought he was nuts, but you know what? They were starting to make things happen, and it, the most important thing was integrating the kids in the community, and that's what I saw. And and some of our poor kids started to get involved in it, and you know, started out with 200 kids the first time, and then they, they anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 kids now come every July, and that certain uh, I think it's the third, or third Wednesday of the month, and they and they do it, and it's worked out well. <laughs> Spend 200 million dollars to build a new road coming into our area. 
we were looking upon an improvement in our communication lines and uh, hopefully attracting internet uh, companies. Yes. I had a walk in River Street in many, many years. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. I'm afraid I rattled them out or something. <laughs> People in it are happy with change. You, you know, there's a certain amount of hostility in, in the way this was left. Uh -huh. by the people who left here. Yeah. And, you know, the, the so-called gentrification mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we're not going to avoid them completely, mm -hmm. that's for sure. You know, that now we ask folks to open and everything, and does it make any difference, to, like, to you, Ms. Walker? Not a bit. <laughs> not a bit. I haven't even been in it. I'm not really in the no, 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 now, I want you to listen that to the girl standing in the background. Art doesn't mean a thing to her, but listen to what her answer is, you know, about the impact of that. Are you interested in it? Nah, not really. Do you know? I, I, the only thing I'm interested in is the business is very good now. Which is great. Does it make any difference in your life, Jeff Morgan? See? Oh, I hate to say such a true thought. Great as to these things, I've become quite interested in them. <laughs> Hopefully, 
uh, my message today helps a little bit again. Thank you.